Hello, friends. This is a difficult time in our country once again, as recent events have shown us that not everyone has the same experience of what it means to be an American. I just rewatched the video of a black man in Minneapolis with an officer's knee on his neck saying that he couldn't breathe. And I watched the life drain from that man's face as the onlookers begged for the police to get off him, to check for his pulse. <sighs> it's evil. That is absolutely evil. I don't care what that man had done. The moment he was safely subdued, there's no need for that. There's no need for that. Now, I think at this juncture in our history, there are some voices that are very important in this time. I think the voices of people who are, are educated and knowledgeable and wise in educational and political systems, we must listen to them. And hopefully they can show us a way that we as a culture can move forward in a way that is truly equal and, and beneficial to all. I'm a Christian, and my training is in the Bible. And so I think my role is to speak to those of us who call on the name of Jesus, we as the church, to, to offer some idea of how we perhaps should respond. And that is not new. I, I was just reminded of William Wilberforce, who uh, lived just about 1800 in, in Great Britain. He became a Christian, and he worked tirelessly to abolish the slave trade in England. And he did it. He did it. A full half a century before that was even a real thought in America. So we look to examples like him who he saw the dignity and worth of every life created by God. And he fought to make sure that those lives were treated equally and fairly. And that comes to us from the very beginning of our scriptures. We read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And it's so key that we notice that there's no division, there's no implication that, that a certain skin color might possess more or less of the image of God. If anything, by saying male and female, he created them, and that they're both bearers of God's image, it's inclusive. Every single person on this earth, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, Indian, Native American, whatever, we're all image bearers of God. In male and female, we're all image bearers of God. Now, after the flood, in Genesis chapter 9, God shows us that those who bear his image are precious, if we didn't know that already. He tells Noah, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. Not only does every living human on this earth bear the image of God, that image is absolutely sacred and must be protected. Now, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Colossians, and he's talking to them about putting on the new self. And that's fairly common language in the New Testament of taking off the old sinful ways and putting on the new self. But he says in chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 and 11, Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. There's that image again. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. 
Now, I've known for a long time that that those classes he mentioned were classes that had division. They caused division. Like Greek and barbarian and Jew and uncircumcised and circumcised. These were groups that did not get along. And Paul is saying that we have unity and equality because of Jesus. I wasn't as familiar with the Scythians. And I found this footnote in my Bible. And I don't think I could say it any better than this footnote. So I'm going to read it to you. It said the Scythians were a people group located along the northern coast of the Black Sea. To the Greeks, the Scythians were a violent, uneducated, uncivilized, and altogether inferior people. In contrast to such discrimination and prejudice against other races and cultures, Paul shows that Jesus, who is all and in all, binds all Christians together in equality, irrespective of such differences. Now, just in case you didn't catch that, Paul is saying that the Greeks' view of the Scythians, of looking down on them as inferior, is nonsense. And I believe we can say the same thing today. Any view that denigrates any other people group as lesser is nonsense. And in fact, it may be evil. I've been around the church long enough to have heard some really bad theology created to justify racism. I've read and heard of the mark of Cain from Genesis as, as somehow being a reason that, that we don't have to treat the black community with dignity, and that's nonsense. I've heard of the idea that the Hamitic curse that Noah's son Ham, because of what he did, and he was somehow the father of the, the black nation, that somehow his curse justifies the continued poor treatment of the black community. And that's nonsense. In fact, those things are evil. Now, friends, I don't, I don't know the way forward for our country. Again, I think there are going to be some really important voices for us to listen to about how to move forward as a society. What I do know is that we, the church, who lift up the name of Jesus, must affirm the full humanity and image of God that inhabits every single person. The image of God is not white. It's something bigger than a skin color. We, we must be vocal, like William Wilberforce was, about the evil of the slave trade. We must be vocal about the dignity and worth of every life that God has created. And we must refute any teaching or voice that denies that especially when that is done in the name of God. I'm really thankful to be a part of a church family that embraces ethnic diversity and celebrates it. My life is better because of Kim. My life is better because of Montez and Renata. My life is better because of Mondo. I know it's a dangerous thing to list people when you're in a moment like this, because I'm sure I'm forgetting some. So please forgive me and please hear my heart. But you all make my life better. You make my family better. And I'm thankful for you all. Friends, I don't have the answers. To my brothers and sisters in the black community, 
All I can say is I see you. I see you and I affirm that God has made you and that the image of God in you is beautiful and it is worthy. And I'm with you. I'm here with you. I may not know how to help, but please, please tell me how I can. And I want to. And I think I need to ask for forgiveness for not talking about this sooner. I always close these videos encouraging you to walk in the light of Jesus and be the light to the world around you. And I think that idea, that idea is really important right now. Friends, we have to be the light. There is darkness all around us in this world. And we who call on the name of Jesus, who is himself the light of the world, we need to be his light. Thank you all for bearing with me through this very long and rambling video. I usually try to keep these teachings short and concise. I think my heart is just too heavy and there's just too much to say to keep it short and concise. So thank you all.